I have a list of games I want to cover, but I know it comes with a risk for my sanity. Over the years, I've heard in one way or another about them, and I'm sure some of them are not good. They are probably janky, badly designed, but maybe I'll stumble on a hidden gem. That's what I want to know. In the worst case scenario, I hope I'll have a good laugh. My recent video about their life is an example of so bad it's good. I'm all down for a good underrated game. I'm always on the lookout for the next hidden gem, something in the vein of Necrovision. Very fun, albeit a bit janky FPS with good shooting. Well, Dream Killers isn't that. It's still a first person shooter, but that's all it is. It's developed by Mindware Studios, based in the Prague, Czech Republic, and published by Aspire Media on 12th of October 2009 for PC. I think there was an Xbox 360 version in development, but it was probably scrapped. That's just a guess. On paper, the concept behind the game is amazing. You play as Alice Drake, a psychiatrist that has the unique ability to enter her patient's mind. All of them have a phobia and they materialize in their minds. Spiders, clowns, etc. You name it, it's there. Now think about the concept for a second. Pause the video if you have to. All phobias that can morph into enemies or how entering someone's mind can affect the level design. Twists and turns, crazy level layouts. Let your imagination go wild. Now keep all those thoughts and let's see if anything comes close to them. From where do I start? Where all stories do, at the very beginning. It's quite common for older titles to need some tinkering to be played properly on a modern PC. And this one is no exception. The game runs by default with 40 FPS for some reason. Two lies in a .ini file fixes that. However, the first run of the game was looking like this, stretched. It took me an hour to figure it out. It turns out that this was because my TV was plugged into the PC. We are off to a good start. Let's move on to the story. There isn't much to say. As I mentioned earlier, you play as Alice Drake. As a little girl, she was having constant nightmares that no one believed were real. But after some time of struggling, Alice realized if those nightmares are in her dreams, they should obey her rules. At that moment, her life took a drastic diversion and it was born the psychiatrist that helps her patients by entering their minds and fixing them by shooting the ever-living crap of their fears. In present day 2009, Alice does whatever she can to help people. However, she noticed that her patient's nightmares are becoming stronger than usual and also they are afraid of her and when there is no place to run, they fight like there is no tomorrow. As she continues to help people, Alice is put up against a demon. After defeating him, she forces a confession. It turns out there is an organization that is feeding on our fears and they want Alice dead. Their name is Dream Killers. A couple of patients later, Alice exhausted from the battle fell on the street, presumably hit by a car. There she sees the Devour, the demon in charge of dream killers, who informs her that things are about to get really bad for her. Now she has to fight for her life and relive some of her worst memories, twisted and scarier, but she is ready for payback. Alice reaches him, kills him, wakes up with a smile on her face and game over. I could shorten the synopsis, like a lot, but I want you to see the story for how bad it is. By itself the premise is very cool, but the execution is lacking. There is stuff said that never goes anywhere. It even starts from the opening cutscene. Alice says she must repeat her name when entering a patient's mind or she will lose herself. This never comes up again. Or how about this? The creatures of the dream world are becoming more powerful. And each one I encounter seems more vicious and demented than the last. Coincidence? Emerging pattern? This may require some additional research. Or this. I've always known that I can die in the dream world. The dream is reality, and reality is a dream. But this new situation is different somehow. These dreams run from me as if they're afraid, and when cornered they fight as if their life depended on it. But why would they be afraid of me? And what has happened to my patients? I used to have clients scheduled for months in advance, but now the phone hardly ever rings. Something's changed, and I need to know what that is. Perhaps it's time to make a few house calls to find the answers. What research? What calls? None of them come up at any point. I could say blind luck help her when she stumbles on the demon who spilled the beans. I thought they are all phobias manifested as nightmares, but Alice calls this guy a demon for some reason. At the end of one boss fight, Alice compares it to the previous three, saying it's consistent with them. 
But how? Explain what you mean. To me, they are all at the same level. There is no difference. Instead of show don't tell, the dev did it the other way around. All this made me hungry to know more about the world. The concept is amazing, but honestly, it feels like chunks of the story are missing and this makes the plot disjointed and bare bones. One positive thing I would say about the story is its presentation. There are a few cutscenes and they are done with these nicely drawn animations that look like an oil painting sometimes. I like them and I wish there were more. Where the game dropped the ball, like a wrecking ball mind you, really hard is in the gameplay, right off the bat. The first impression was not good. After the introductory cutscene, you are dropped into the first level with just your hands. Each weapon has a primary and secondary action, including your starting one. Hmm, this reminds me of something, I can't figure it out. It's probably nothing. Let's move on. However, the ability that Alice apparently has as a starter weapon sucks. The primary is shooting flames, but it takes way too long to kill anything, and you need to be very close to set an enemy on fire, and honestly, I think the reach of the flame is way too short to be useful. Taking damage is unavoidable. The secondary is... I honestly don't know what exactly is. You hold or not the right mouse button to do this. Now sometimes it kills the enemy, other times it doesn't. I'm not sure how exactly it works. It's like force choking or crushing. On bigger enemies, it knocks them down and it can be somewhat useful, but none of them feel good to use. Why would you prefer them if you can blast the nightmares? One thing is immediately obvious, the game will throw many enemies at once and constant shooting and movement is required. Then why would you make your first weapons suck so badly? So the first impression is not good, but how about the rest of the weapons? After dealing with the spiders, you have a choice to go left or right. Before starting to record, I played the game for 10ish minutes just to get the feel of it. I took the left entrance and fought more spiders. However, when I started recording, I went the other way. Why am I telling you this? The right path led to a small arena that introduced me to the first weapon, a minigun with a rocket launcher. Okay, there is something here. This sounds way too familiar. <laughs> anyway, why am I mentioning this? Because you can miss the minigun and play for some time with just your hands. Not cool at all. The first proper weapon is something so cool, right? Right? Well, no. When I saw it, I was like, this is awesome, it's time to shred some spiders, but immediately got disappointed. The minigun overheats too fast and the secondary, the rocket launcher, reloads after each rocket and it takes ages. This leaves you vulnerable. The worst part is that you can't skip the animation when you try to change the weapon, it buffers the action. Think about any shooter you've played that has minigun or a rocket launcher. When you get one, you feel awesome, because you know you're gonna rip enemies to pieces. This is not the case here. The minigun feels weak and the splash damage of the rocket is very small unless you are next to a wall or enemy. The game looks like a boomer shooter and you might say you have plenty of weapons, just be careful what and where you are firing and switch to a different weapon. Well my dear viewer, you can carry only two weapons. I usually blame consoles for this but the game is published only for PC unless I was right about the Xbox 360 version. Those two weapons are technically four, but with the unskippable animation, you have to think twice before using any of the alternate fire modes. The other weapons are more or less the same, some are a bit better, others are marginally worse. By far the best is a shotgun. It shreds through everything. The alternate fire mode freezes enemies and it has cool design. Most importantly, it likes the design flaws of the other weapons, aka overheating or whatever variation developer put on the others. Hmm, this combination seems utterly familiar. I can't put my finger on it. Anyway, even against bosses, it's a beast. Just look at how fast I'm lowering his life. Another interesting, at first glance, weapon is this electric gun. It doesn't feel good to use because it hits multiple targets, but it does very little damage. The alternate fire mode is a slow moving ball of energy that does constant damage. I used it a lot before realizing what some pickups do and switch entirely to the shotgun. The most powerful is this laser. The secondary fire mode is a ball of light that attracts all enemies for a short time. The problem I found is that it doesn't feel satisfying to use and the laser drains way too fast and you have to waste to refill its ammo by itself. You can see that's for balancing purposes and to make you switch weapons but throwing so many enemies all the time you don't feel powerful but overwhelmed all the time. By far the worst is the grenade launcher, it has very unique problem. The grenade goes slightly to the right and not where is the cursor. This is enough to make you miss every shot. I don't think there is anything else to be said about this weapon.
I have to give credit to the developer. They justify the existence of the weapons. It's the fighting will of every patient. It's very small detail and it's appreciated. I just wish more stuff like this were put in the story and the game in general. The developer implemented other mechanics to try and make it a richer experience. But first let me explain the UI because the developer for sure didn't do it. It's tied to those mechanics. In the down left corner it's obvious, your health bar. Those three big red marks are your lives. The game has life system. This is good because the game is packed with enemies in tight spaces and you can easily blow yourself up or fall from a high place and die. Those were the two cases I lost most lives. I barely died from an enemy fire. The way you restore your life and your health is done with these red orbs that enemies leave when they die. The game is generous with them so it's very easy to recover them. If you die you start at the beginning of the arena you were just locked in. There is a penalty if you lose a life. It's tied to the second mechanic. Collecting what I call bells left from deceased nightmares. They increase the bar at the bottom right corner. The more you collect the more powerful and faster your weapon becomes. It's most noticeable with the shotgun because it increases the firing rate significantly and melts through regular enemies and even bosses. When you die you lose the whole bar. However I didn't find it that difficult to recover it. The game is generous with them. Even this can save the shooting, it never made me feel powerful. The weapons still overheat, finish their ammo fast, etc. like usual. In the upper left corner is your energy. It allows you to do couple of things. The first is using your spells. The second is this spirit run. You press a button, your spectral projection starts running. Pressing the same button a second time teleports you to where it reached. This is mostly used for getting out of danger but I forgot it existed. The only time it's required is just before the final boss. You can only step on the platforms, the electricity hurts you. Energy is restored by collecting green orbs left by enemies and again the game is generous with them. The third is allowing you to stay in this parallel dimension. There are portals introduced in the second level and used in every other until the end of the game. You will get enemies from both dimensions and you can kill them if you are in the appropriate one. You cross between both of them constantly. The fire dimension, let's call it that way, requires energies to stay there or you will die. Enemies drop energy and you can stay longer. This was a fun thing the first couple of times but the constant use throughout the whole game diminishes any excitement. I said you have to be in certain dimension to kill a nightmare but that's not entirely true. If you have the shotgun and you are in the fire dimension you can freeze the ones from the other side and kill them. I discovered this by pure chance. I wonder if this is intentional. The last mechanic is almost pointless. In the upper right corner a bar is filling when you kill enemies and when you reach the top you become faster, the world turns grey and you see enemies in red. Hmm, this sounds like another game I've played, Painkiller. So castle level, factory level, carbon copy of the weapons, the demon mode from Painkiller but it sucks. What else the developer made? Well that answers everything. Before Dreamkiller, the developers made the mod for Painkiller and the publisher Dreamcatcher Interactive gave them full support and released it as an official standalone expansion in 2007. It's called Painkiller Overdose. So the game tries to be a Painkiller clone and simultaneously differentiate itself. However, the devs didn't understand to the fullest what makes their inspiration great. Animation, sounds, feedback from enemies and weapons, great music. To be fair, they probably didn't have the greatest budget and that's why the story and gameplay are half-baked. And the release time between Overdose and Dream Killer is 2 years so maybe the lack of time prevented a more polished experience. On the other hand, the problems in the gameplay are on a fundamental level. You can't just throw so many enemies on screen, like it's Painkiller or Serious Sam and expect to have fun with weapons that don't feel powerful, constantly have to wait for them to recharge and limit you to only 2 weapons. You're sabotaging your game. Credit where credit is due, I like the enemy variety. From familiar foes like spiders, clowns and children toys to more sci-fi, hokey beasts and fantasy one like gargoyles. Everything you can imagine is there. But like their inspiration, the AI is not the best. They just stand and shoot or move and then shoot. The difficulty comes from their number. They just charge at you or shoot from far away. That's the extent of their capabilities. Bosses are ok at best, there aren't any gimmicks to them besides waiting for a shield to drop down so you can damage them. Ok, there is technically one different. You can't hurt him directly, you need to shoot the hive outside of the arena. Once destroyed the boss dies too. While fighting one, regular enemies will spawn constantly but unless you don't have much health there is no point of shooting them. Once you are done with the boss they dissolve. None of them are challenging and it doesn't require anything more than spinning around them. The final boss, a floating head, 
took way too long to kill compared to the others and it wasn't very interesting fight. When you lower his life, he restores it unless you destroy these things. Destroy all of them and he can't recover. I guess energy flow through them and feeds him. You do this process for way too long. It took me 11 minutes of repeating the same thing over and over again. It was a boring fight. One that got seriously on my nerves was this demon. You need to pass through a portal and only then you can damage him. But going on these stairs was a constant struggle. I was falling down like he was pulling me. I know looking at the footage doesn't seem like that, but it felt so weird. Instead of tense boss fight, going in and out through the portals, watching my energy, I felt nothing else but frustration. There is still a chance of me doing something wrong, but it definitely didn't feel that way when I played it. Levels are also have pretty good variety. Castle, sanatorium, construction site, industrial building, arctic base, forest, etc. But honestly, there is a lot of missed opportunities to do some wacky levels. You start with just regular level design, but as the game goes, they can become wacky and nonsensical and in the end, maybe you can throw some asher ones. There is a few instances of something more than a square or circular arena. I wanted more places like this. From an asylum, you are transferred to walk and fight on a heart. Or how from ice ruins you step onto a floating island with a tree in the middle. This is what I think it will be more fun to see in the game, but there isn't too much of this type of level design. There is one level that sort of does a similar thing. You are on a train where each new door leads to an entirely different place. However, the design looks way too similar to older levels. They probably used some masses for this one. And by doing this, it doesn't stand out at all. Dream Killer has probably the blandest level I've ever played. It's a forest with some hills and some plants and you chop trees and bees. It's like you took Sauron's side because a lot of trees go down. There is nothing memorable, I can barely recall it in my mind and I still wonder why the swarm of bees takes so long to kill. Most of the levels revolve around locking you in a place quite often in a cramped space and until everything dies you can't move on. There is some variety with either an enemy or an object in the environment that spawns the nightmares and needs to be destroyed first but they are repeated constantly like the portals and start to become more nuisance than something enjoyable. Later levels require insane amount of shooting to destroy one. One more thing about the levels, I managed to soft lock the game. I had to enter through this portal but I fell through the floor, there was a gap and I had to let the enemies kill me so the game can put me back at the checkpoint. This might be more on me but I think this wasn't tested enough probably to avoid stuff like this happening. Sound design is okay, weapons, explosions and enemies, if they make a noise, were just fine, music is just a generic rock. It was somewhere in the background I didn't even pay attention to it, it was that forgettable. There is not a single memorable track. However, there is something interesting and surprising in a good way. The best part of the game is the voice acting. There is some serious talent on display. Robin Atkin Tones voices the demon, Alice interrogates for information, but you may know him as Travis Touchdown from No More Heroes franchise, among others. Dick D. Wasserman is the main villain, the floating head called Devourer. Under his belt, he has credits in Halo 5, Call of Duty, Titanfall 2, Batman Arkham games, etc. When I started the game and heard Alice's voice, it was so familiar, so I had to stop the game immediately to check on the internet. To my surprise, this was the voice of Rain from Blood Rain, Laura Bailey. If the name rings a bell, well, it's no surprise. She voiced Abby in The Last of Us Part 2. It's such a shame that the game the three of them were involved is below average. The most frustrating thing about my experience with Dream Killer is that the idea and the product are not the same. For whatever reason, the end result is the worst it could be. It's boring. It has few sparks trying to shed some light, but it wasn't enough. The game is stuck in the purgatory, between an old school shooter and something modern. At the time of release, the gaming industry shifted to a different type of first person shooter and the game seems to try to appease everyone but it just didn't work for all the reasons I listed in the video. For the next video I promise a real hidden gem. All I'm going to say is that it's a stealth game. Hopefully I'll manage to release it before the beginning of October because I'm starting my last year in the university and my focus will shift entirely. See you next time and keep buzzing.